Hey, we're back on Mondays. Today is April 3rd, 2017. This is Human Factors Cast, episode 36. I can't believe we've been doing this for 36 weeks already. That's crazy. We'll be breaking down Microsoft's new update. Uh, you can now beg for money on Facebook and all of our favorite April Fool's jokes from around the web. Uh, I have nothing clever to say right now, and this is pretty unprofessional, but I got an email once that said, hey, that really unprofessional thing you did for the intro, I really like it. Keep doing it. And so, anyway, Human Factors Cast starts right now. Welcome to Human Factors Cast, your weekly podcast for all things human factors, psychology, and design. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Human Factors Cast. I'm your host, Nick Rome, joined today by Blake Arnsdorf. Oh, back to the beautiful Mondays. What's going on, Nick? Back to Mondays. I'm so happy we're back on Mondays. Mondays are just more convenient for everybody. And hopefully, our listeners will agree, uh, and it's a pleasant surprise, that they are now getting Human Factors Cast on Monday nights instead of Tuesday nights. How are you, Blake? It'll be good. I'm good, man. Back in sunny California, just trying to adjust back to the the three hour time difference. But other than that, oh, I'm man. feeling pretty great, man. Good, good. Uh, did you fall for any of the uh, April Fool's jokes we're gonna be talking uh, about later? Honestly, man, came across no April Fool's jokes. Period. Almost didn't even really remember that it was April Fool's Day on the first. So, how about you? Did you come across any of this stuff? Oh yeah. Well, okay. So this stuff wasn't the stuff that got me. Um, but. I will say I got pretty hard by one of them. So it was Friday night around 9 o'clock, and uh, I get this YouTube notification that says, um, or, or I get this notification from Reddit or something. It was like, uh, Star Wars Episode Eight, a, a trailer official discussion thread. And I was like, uh, what? They dropped it? They just didn't get in here? And like I called my girlfriend, and I was like, we got to watch this right now. And we put it on, and it's a uh, Star Wars kind of fooled everybody and um they put up a trailer of of episode one <laughs> so funny enough funny enough we were actually branching out that night and uh we, we were meeting some people for the first time and i you know i i wanted to relay the prank right i wanted to relay the prank i was like hey so did you guys see that new star wars episode eight trailer just dropped tonight and the guy was like yeah it was great and i was like wait <coughs> wait what 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 you you saw it and he's like yeah and hold on no this gets this gets really better because i was trying to pull a fast one on this guy but this guy works as a uh well i don't want to give too much away just because he might lose his job for telling me he saw it but he basically does post production on certain things for certain companies and uh um, oh cool he actually got to see the trailer and so the whole time i was like oh you saw it oh mm. So so tell me more about this trailer, right? And like he was surprised how much I knew about the trailer, even though it's not even out yet. Anyway, we're here to talk about human factors. So let's talk about human factors. This is the part of the show all about human factors news. And this could be for anything from AI has been popping up the last couple of weeks, virtual reality, automation, psychology, design, whatever it is, as long as it has to do with the field of human factors. Blake, what do we got up first? All right. So coming at you from Microsoft on April 11th, they'll begin rolling out Windows 10 creators update, which includes a game mode, improved privacy settings, and the ability to draw on everything, create 3D images in MS Paint, improvements to their Edge browser, and the ability to live stream with zero delay. Um, I thought this was kind of weird how this particular article phrased it, because they said a lot of this stuff that is coming out for the this update is not so useful, but between Beam, I think it's Beam as the... Uh, live streaming app service that they talk about and game mode. I thought this was actually pretty good stuff coming out to Windows 10. You're a Windows user, right? I am a Windows user. Do you use 10? I do use 10. Were you stoked on any of these improvements? So, yes. Uh, there are a couple things that I really like. So, being a human factors professional, as we are, Blake, I think uh, the first point they make in this article that we grabbed is uh, you can draw on everything now, and that's for us, that is amazing because you can get somebody who has made a mock-up in Azure or Balsamic and you can draw all over it. And you can you can just say, oh, look, here, here, do this. Put the button here. And, you know, I, I feel like that in itself is useful. But as a gamer, uh, you know, 
we can live stream now and, and you know, no one will watch, but uh, I, I'm just kidding. We have a couple, we have a couple uh, listeners that will watch us. If we did, if we did stream, I don't know. This is uh this is something we might look into, but I think that's cool. Um, now I don't, this edge thing. I have no idea exactly. Uh, yeah, so I, so much of it seemed to be tied to Edge. Yeah, and so so it just looks like looks like another way they're trying to prop up the browser. Which okay, cool. I'm still not going to use uh, it over Chrome. Yeah, but. exactly. The, the one thing I will say, the one thing that I am super excited about, but I have no technical expertise to utilize, is the 3D uh, Microsoft Paint. Yes, you and me both. I was like, oh, this is so cool, but I'm not going to be able to use it very well. Yeah, yeah, there's no way. But I can't wait to see, like, you remember those old school Microsoft Paint drawings that people, pixel art, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I can't wait to see what people come up with uh, with these 3D creations and whether or not someone's going to write a port to be able to export those into actual virtual environments that you can explore with things like the HTC Vive or the Oculus Rift. Ooh, that's a good one. I was actually thinking that they might use some of it for some of their 3D printing because I know they've got like a uh, oh, yeah. just a 3D print program that's already pre-built in there. But yeah, that'd be sweet to see it in like VR environment. Oh yeah, that too. All right, you have any other? Microsoft's getting an update, everybody. <laughs> Woo! Yay! And I love that they gave it a name. It's a creator's update, which it does make it, sense. It kind of is, but it's I don't know. It seems like some small stuff in the in the long run. I don't know. I just feel like Microsoft is consistently late to the party. And uh, it's really unfortunate. Like, okay, we have we have three D drawing tools. We have live streaming capabilities. We have you know programs where you can annotate everything. I don't know. Uh, anyway, that's my thoughts on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll kick into the next story then. All right, let's do All it. Right. All right. So the government voted to repeal rules preventing internet service providers from selling their customers web browsing and app usage data without explicit consent. Under the current statute, customers would be allowed to opt out letting their ISP sell their data, but without without the rule to instant to sorry to interrupt that statute, it's much harder to enforce. All is not completely lost, however. Your ISP still has to allow you to opt out of having your data sold so you can call them or go online to find out how to do that. And I'm sure for anybody that's listening out there, as well as me, if you've used probably your ISP's website, it's probably very hidden, so you might want to go ahead and just call and figure out how to do that. Dark patterns. But Nick, this adds so much frustration for me. Um, and I can only imagine you feel the same way, especially still working in the government, understanding, understanding a lot more the cybersecurity risks that exist out there. But I do. these guys are selling your data of app users and browsing data openly. It kind of freaks me out. I hate it. 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 Uh, I hate it. I don't... My I was so frustrated by this vote earlier this week. It's like, do you people not understand what this means? This means that they're going to sell my data and some company is... I, I, it's not so much about the selling data, right? Because Google and, and Microsoft and Yahoo already do this. The, the, Facebook does it. It's it's out there. It's already being done. It's just one more layer that I have to, like, play crowd control with. It's I have to angrily call my ISP and be like, hey, don't... See, if they have to record more data and have places to store it than they already do... So they have to go into their pockets, expand how they're taking on, taking in your data where they're putting it to even make this a worthwhile venture. But obviously the way they're going to target people and what they're going to do with the data is lucrative enough that this makes sense for them. So I don't know. Uh, it's just going to bombard I, you all over the place every time you go to do anything, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. I, I will advise our listeners, if you haven't already, go get a VPN uh, because that will protect your browsing history and uh yeah, get a vpn just it, it's like it's like not wearing a condom during sex go get a vpn it's yeah and one final note for that too don't let anybody or don't be fooled by like incognito web browsing or any of that your isp can still definitely see all that information although hang in on. any kind of private web browsing one one web browser that does work is opera believe it or not opera has a built-in vpn uh, and you can utilize that, but it doesn't hide all of your traffic, right? So 
Just get a VPN. Just do it. Just hang on. Is Shia in here? Is Shia here? Shia, can you tell these people what to do? Just do it. All right. Thanks, Shia. <laughs> Shia coming at you live on VPNs. Okay, hang All right, on. Nick, you ready to move to the next one? No, really quick. I just have to tell the story behind the soundboard. So <laughs> I have this app, right? So we, we do all the sound with an app on a soundboard. I just want my I just want the listeners to understand wh- why we have that queued up ready to go. <laughs> so I have I have an app and it came with those uh it came with four things like loaded onto it and I can't figure out how to delete them. It comes with a punch sound effect. It comes with a horn which you've heard before. It comes with Shia LaBeouf and it comes with John Cena's intro. Wait, John Cena's <laughs> intro is preloaded on there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So I, I really, I, I don't understand. I, I don't know how to pull, talk about user experience. I don't know how to pull these things off of it. Okay, okay, John Cena. All right, you're done. I don't know how to pull these things off of it. So that's why you, that's why we had that queued up. Anyway, that's yes. That's awesome, actually. I, I actually didn't know those were <laughs> presets. I thought you went and got that no. stuff and put it in <laughs> no. there. <laughs> of course not. I, I, do you think I would actively risk playing one of those things on the show? <laughs> well, now we've done all four. So yes, now yes, well, now our listeners know. Maybe, maybe in the future, I can like just open the show with John Cena. <laughs> there you go. That'd be hilarious. All right, all right. What's up next? All right. So, good bit of Facebook in the news this week. But anyway, so now you can start to ask for money directly through Facebook. A new feature allows you to launch a campaign for crowdsourcing money from your friends. If you want to launch a campaign, you're limited to a few categories, those being education, medical, pet medical, crisis relief, personal emergency, and funerals. I don't know why I have a weird feeling about this for some reason. I guess when I, when I think crowdsourcing, I think kind of like startup capital, but I forgot that a lot of people like raise money for cancer treatments and stuff like that. And I guess Facebook is probably a great way to do that, especially if you have a large network. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I jokingly put up a GoFundMe when I got my appendix removed. Uh, and Are you serious? I did. I did. Uh, because I knew insurance would cover most of it. And I was like, I, I don't know. I was playing on those fears. But I also shouldn't have, uh, in hindsight. Like, this is, I, I love that they... Um, they limit it to certain categories, right? They, so they, you know, education, medical, uh, pet medical, crisis relief, personal emergency, funerals. Um, and this is, this is great for, uh, for those instances where somebody can't afford something like this. Um, and I feel like there is emotion tied to each one of these things. And I I feel like there will be some outrage about not having some category at some point. I don't know what that category is, but I feel like it's coming. You might be right, but I feel like these are good starter places because I mean it's all it's all kind of really personal stuff. Um, it's things maybe your friends would be able to relate with if they've gone through any of it, like they need money for education, right? If they had like a, a dog that was sick or something like that. So I don't know. I think it's a good place to start. I would be worried what the expansion looks like though. Um, and I, and I feel like people could potentially abuse this as horrible oh, as yeah. that sounds. Hang on. Human factors cast is going to put up a crisis relief, uh, campaign, because we need funds to keep the podcast afloat. <laughs> <laughs> An HFC crisis relief fund. Help me and Nick stay on the air. We uh, we actually actively turn down advertisers to keep this show ad-free for you. So if you like what we're doing, you can support us on our Patreon at patreon.com slash humanfactorscast. All right, Blake, what's up next? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful segue. Okay, so a subject who is... All right, let me make sure. Yep, my bad. A subject who was paralyzed below his shoulders in a bicycling accident is be- to believe to be the first person with qu- quadriplegia in the world to have w- one arm and to have arm and hand movements restored with the help of two temporarily implanted technologies, a brain computer interface with recording electrodes under his skull and a functional electrical stimulation known as FES system, activating his arm and hand, reconnect his brain to paralyzed muscles. Bill Kochevar, I think that could be right, grabbed a mug of water and drew it to his lips and drank through the straw. 
Nick, once again, we are seeing some brain interface stuff that is just getting more and more intensive. And now we went from being able to send signals from the brain to actually enacting a function like drinking from a cup. I don't know. This is great stuff to hear. I'm I'm amazed. I am consistently amazed with the things that human beings are able to accomplish. Um, this is this is so cool. This is so cool. Uh, I so I'm I'm looking over the article and there's a video of, but just the fact that we are getting closer and closer for somebody to be able to do this. That is just amazing to me. Yeah. I'm going through the article. I just thought it was very, I, I don't know. It seems so sci-fi, but it, what is happening is the, the brain signals are just being recorded, then translated into what that would be in movements. And I just find that so fascinating that what it gives some analogy, but these are, two very small brain implants that are being used to do this. And if you take a look at the apparatus that he uses, I guess, as kind of like the hand to help guide the mug type of thing, it looks it looks kind of overwhelming. But yeah. the fact that it, there's such small pieces of pieces being used for the brain computer interface and it's collecting that much data and translating it into movement, it is shocking. Yeah, I mean this okay, this robot arm that kind of attaches to his arm that he's controlling the robot that controls his arm is basically the gist of what I'm getting here. And um you know, the fact that he's able to like think about going from not being able to control your body to being able to control your body again. That is Oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. I wonder this this really brings into question though like what if this is being done you know what kind of things can Elon Musk do with his Neuralink company that that uh we talked about a little bit last week like what you know there are companies that are focusing on this brain computer interface and it feels like we're talking about brain computer interfaces every week now and I mean is I really think we have been yeah I, I, like seriously every week uh it, yeah I'm I'm just blown away. I'm blown away. Uh, do you have any other thoughts on that one, Blake? I w it, it's interesting because it, when you bring up Neuralink, it, I kind of thought of this as well as going through the story too, and it it'll be cool to watch like how that because you, you said watching the video it took a long time for this to actually happen. Well, I'm wondering how much that's going to improve over time with more startups getting into this and more scientists being brought into the tech world to speed up those kind of translations of signals into movements. Well, uh, so I don't know. I would say over the next few years, we're going to see some really giant leaps and bounds. I mean, it seems like we're seeing it almost every week, something a little bit different. Yeah. Um, but it's, I don't know. I'm stoked on the well, future for it. You bring up a, a great point with that speed. Elon Musk has a, has a, has that uh, speed fetish. Because you got the the ludicrous mode on Teslas, I wonder if you're gonna have a ludicrous mode on controlling your uh, your your appendages. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? The guy's a nut. All right, hang on, really quick. We want to make a quick thank you to all our friends at Gizmodo, Science Daily, The Next Web, and TechCrunch for bringing us the stories this week. We post all these articles uh, that we talk about on the show uh, on our Facebook and Twitter, so you can go there to get more details. All right, Blake, let's go ahead and get to our next story. Oh, yes, and one place that you can check out some of these stories that we post throughout the week is through Twitter. And speaking of Twitter, they're making a pretty big change on their interface. So Twitter's making your 140 characters count for just a little bit more. So last week, Twitter made the decision to not count at usernames towards your characters within a reply. While some users may have already seen this feature in testing, the feature is beginning to roll out widely now. The changes should help some avoid the confusion, plus have a little bit more space to get in that extra word or two during your next tweet storm. Now, Nick, I have to say this always confused me because I swear there'd be times I would be counting my characters and not understanding why I couldn't get that last word in there. And it's always because of the username. So I'm stoked they finally did this. It's going to make it so much more fun to interact on Twitter. There's already abuse. Uh, of course. <laughs> I can only imagine. There's already there abuse. On Twitter. What do people do? Since there's no, no restriction on usernames, uh, they will add everybody in a single tweet and you'll have a tweet yeah. that's, like 400 names long 
And uh, yeah, I, I, there there are some thoughts out there that this is destroying Twitter because it was built on the platform that uh, you know you can only use 140 characters, and if you choose to tag somebody in it, then that's part of it. Um, and you know they're also um, they're also they they just introduced editing tweets recently too, I believe, for um, official accounts and people uh, people have just been attacking Twitter for uh, like all these changes. And I'm not a Twitter. I like I I rarely use Twitter. So if you follow me on Twitter, I'm very sorry, but uh, I'm I'm rarely active. <laughs> I mean, I try to be. I try to be sometimes, but. I, maybe you can speak to this a little bit more than me, Blake, but uh, I, I feel like this is a big change. You know, it is a big change, and I don't know. I feel like it's going to have to go through growing pains on Twitter because the, the small things that they are messing up, like <laughs> letting you add X amount more usernames than you were able to before, they might not have seen that coming. Um, but like the, the editing tweets and stuff like that, I, there is some of the like raw organic element of whether you <laughs> pre read or proofread your tweet before you put it out there or were smart enough to do that. So, I mean, I think that's good for some people, but I don't know. It's kind of the same old, old Twitter to me. Um, I'm a little more active on there than I used to be, but I, I feel like they're going to keep rolling out these kind of changes to keep it fresh and keep people attracted to it and just giving their users a little bit more. Um, the, the funny thing about Twitter is I always wonder when they make these small changes, why they focus so much on that versus, I don't know, monetizing their own social network compared to other ones, but that's right. their choice. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, hopefully, hopefully this means we can tag, uh, at don't panic UX, uh, at Nick underscore Rome and at Human Factors Cast, all in one tweet. That's that's the dream, and the dream yeah, is here. Yeah, that's a that's a plus for us, right? <laughs> all right. Speaking of the other platform that we can uh, share all these stories in, what's up next, Blake? Very true. So back to the other giant. So prepare to see a whole lot more 360 videos on your news feed. That's right. Facebook now allows anyone to stream 360 videos to their page or profile, provided that they have the right camera. Facebook launched 360 videos last year, but only to select pages. Now anyone from your college buddies to your grandmother can stream 360 live. Live 360 video is now available for all Facebook profiles and pages. Now, Nick, this is one where I felt super behind because I don't really know what a Facebook 360 video is or did not perform the stream. Well, Have Blake, you heard of this before? Well, Blake, a Facebook 360 video is a video that covers 360 degrees of visual angle. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, Real hard, right? I know. It's so difficult. No. Um, <laughs> I, I guess before, you know, it was only um, like official accounts, right, or, or something like that select pages but now uh, everyone can and this is cool because i i look at this and i'm like man if uh let's say let's say one of my friends was going to an event and they had one of these uh 360 degree videos right um the the difference is that like uh, the uh, the the real power here is that you can stream now so prior to this uh you know you could upload files or whatever and and view it after the fact but now you can actually view it live so let's say for example one of my friends is going to star wars celebration in i hate to make it about star wars but my god uh so one of my friends is going to star wars celebration in uh, florida this year and if she had one of these 360 degree video cameras and um and enough data and a wi-fi connection and all that stuff I could essentially pop on my Oculus Rift or my PlayStation VR and be there. And that's awesome because I can watch it on a video, but being there is so much different. And I can't stress enough like how much VR adds to that presence. It's like I see a lot of potential for this to be actually tele, you know, commute, telecommute to uh events or be there in terms of telepresence. Yeah, I mean, it makes perfect sense. I feel like that kind of viewing is maybe where they're trying to go with it as they try and roll out more of it being a streaming type of thing. Because that would be sweet if they had this at 
like we were talking before the show, if it was at CES and you could access the live stream for, oh, I don't yeah. know, obviously a fee because that's a big conference. But but anyway, I mean, allowing people to participate that can't necessarily get on a plane and fly somewhere. Oh, yeah. I would pay extra to see it in 360. That'd be cool. Um, oh, yeah. I feel like this is definitely going to ask for like more slip ups in videos, like showing things that maybe you weren't intentionally thinking oh. of because now you have to think about the 360 degree part of it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Some, yeah. There's going to be It'll make for some fun times on oh, Facebook. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we'd be like, turn to, uh, you know, 270 degrees and look down uh, at 470 seconds in or four minutes or whatever, you know. Like, it's going to be, it's going to be weird to like, you know what, that'd be cool. So I just thought about this. So what, you know how YouTube allows you to um, copy a video at a current uh, current time? Yeah. Uh, it'll be cool if if you could be like, Hey, look at this video at this, you know, point of view at this time. And then you can give XYZ coordinates. I yeah, it's coming. like kind of giving somebody a tag to reference when they watch it. That'd be sweet. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. What's up next? Cool. All right. So, new gov- uh, new st- Nude right. governors from the <laughs> Governor's Highway Safety Association shows that there was an estimated 11 percent spike in pedestrian fatalities last year. That's nearly 6000 deaths in one year. So the association attributes increased driving because of cheaper gas and better fuel economy, as well as more people walking for exercise as some of the likely reasons for this, which is kind of hard to believe. But other researchers, however, say that the biggest factor could be that more and more drivers and walkers are distracted by things like cell phones and other electronic devices while out and about, though that's difficult for anybody to confirm. So... Regardless whether or not you're walking or driving, you need to pay attention, especially if you're somebody who plays with an electronic device while doing so. And you know, Nick, I, I just got back from Atlanta. I spent a lot of time with my mom while I was there, and I was shocked how much of the time when she's driving, she's texting or calling somebody on the phone or checking her phone, and it's one of those things. Like, I, I took an attention class, and we studied a bunch. We, look, we read all the studies about the decrement of performance if you're messing around with anything in the car like whether it's a heads-up display to a cell phone and how badly that can affect your ability to like distribute your attention throughout your visual field so this uh, this is really no surprise it's you're kind of taking your life into your own hands when you get in a car and play with a phone right uh pokemon go i i I don't know if that's like all of them but pokemon go or and and the um increase in yeah I, I feel like it's got to be that increase in cell phone and electronic devices. And honestly, this this could be a design issue in terms of, like, roadways. I don't know. I feel like there are some, some unique things that they could do to uh, – was it – I'm having a hard time remembering, Blake. Did we talk about on the show the, uh, the little bumps uh, that uh, – lead to crosswalks and what they represent we did because i feel like that came up in it was a story about directing people that were blind through a mobile app oh yeah Um, no oh yeah maybe i'm having anyway correct us if we're wrong listeners but there's uh you know the the design of these bumps are very deliberate and um ah, yeah no i remember now i remember now yeah we did talk about this um and uh i feel like there's got to be some other more explicit way to warn people that they're about to get run over. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't design it. I'm, I don't specialize in that. But, you know, if you're working out there uh, trying to save people from getting run over or from stupidly walking into the street, bless you. You are you are doing um, amazing work and keep it up. <laughs> And you know, too, hopefully that this Alember, like this giant, that's a, I don't know, I can't get over 6,000 people a year in this kind of, uh, dying in this kind of situation. But I'm wondering, because we've talked a lot about uh, the government regulations of autonomous vehicles and driving and right. how that'll affect, like, who's to blame and the rules and trying to figure out cultural norms that surround different driving areas. But I, I feel like all of this will decrease a substantial amount if automation comes into a play. I mean, it's not going to be like flick of a switch type of thing, but I feel like we'll see a dramatic change in these kinds of problems because it won't be as much left up to just a single person that's distracted. 
yeah, guys, just stay alive for a little bit longer, and then uh, everything will be fine. Cars just a little bit. Ha- just we're, a little we're bit We're going to be fine. It'll be good. Uh, no, the thing that really strikes me about this one is the 11% piece. Like, 6,000 deaths, I... That sounds about right, honestly, and it's you know as bad as that is. But the 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 eleven percent spike, that's well, I I mean I have to look at the year by year, but apparently that's shocking. Um, and so that's that's what six hundred more deaths. Yeah, that sounds about right. Roughly, yeah. Pokemon yeah. Go. That's my that's my analysis. All right, so yeah, it's Pokemon Go's fault. <laughs> so new, <laughs> news was a little bit light this week, um, but. Uh, one thing that did happen over the weekend was April Fool's. Blake, what's our next story? All right, so we're going to break down some of the stuff that happened on Saturday, April Fool's. So all the tech giants put out phony products at the same time. It's almost like they were trying to fool us all. So TechCrunch put together a greatest, a great list of all the greatest April Fool's jokes this year. And we thought it would be fun to put them, put them to good use and talk to them a little bit, talk about them a little bit. So up first, we have Google Gnome. So Google Home is a nifty little voice assistant for inside the home. But what about outside? Nick, I did not see this one, but I wish that I did. Oh, it's I dumb. I would love to have a little Google Gnome outside my door. It's really dumb, but I know people who would buy this. Uh, it's, yeah. It, the, the, um, the appeal is that it's outside, right? And, and potentially waterproof and weatherproof um and that is the appeal for me but dressed up like a garden gnome nah i'm out <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty sweet that they were like pitching it with attributes like oh it's outside so it's waterproof weatherproof you can oh i don't know fine i don't know if that's the case i just i that's what i would assume if you were to buy an outdoor google home <laughs> all right let's oh, let's kind of speed through these what's up next for sure so Google Japan's bubble wrap keyboard, <laughs> you, pr- you probably type at work. Working can be stressful. You know what releases stress? Popping bubble wrap. And I, nobody knows this better than me. I've been packing my mother's house for two weeks and popping massive amounts of bubble wrap. So props to Google Japan on this one. <laughs> for some reason, but I they... thought you were going to say popping massive amounts of pimples. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> None of those. Uh, but yeah, so Google Japan has turned bubble wrap popping into a typing method this just has to be so funny and i kind of wish i could do this every friday or something just pop a keyboard full of bubble wrap i would imagine it's the same sensation as a uh, mechanical keyboard i love mechanical keyboards i don't know if you use one blake oh yeah oh they're a lot of fun. They're, they're there's something about the clicking and the action of it that click, is click, perfect click, click. yeah they're, they're amazing um i don't use one when we're on the show because i don't want it to show up uh, in the audio, but it's it's so amazing, and I think the uh, bubble wrap keyboard, if they got the um, the tension just right, you know, it could be something really magical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just feel like once you do it, it's kind of like lost its use. Uh, well, yeah, because well, yeah, like they're deflated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you could exactly type the red fox jumped over it, whatever it is. Uh. Although, what if it like reinflated? I think I think <laughs> if it reinflated. This might be just too cool. To I keep. think they did offer that it like reinflated, but you had to run it through a device, so like you could use every key once, and then you did. Anyway, that's why it's a joke. All right, what's up next? All right, so truly is pet listings. Truly is new property pages let you let your pets determine where you live based on a- attributes like landlords that don't like cat hair everywhere and neighbors that don't want to hear your dogs barking anymore so i know this is a joke but this might be useful for some people i agree oh property it's a joke it's a it's a it's a play on words paw like animal paw and purdy like property oh yeah (laughs) i'm sorry guys i'm sorry it's like six o'clock on a monday night (laughs) i'm really i'm sorry for this (laughs) Oh man, uh, it's, it's kind of no. goofy. I I don't know. It's a it's kind of it's a good funny one. I do uh, agree. I do agree. This could be useful. Like there there are attributes that you might want to look for in um, you know, looking for an apartment or a home that uh, that are not on the typical thing, and this might be one of them. Some advanced search feature. Okay, what's up next? I'm done. <laughs> Wait. 
So Lyft went all out this year with a ride-hailing wearable modeled after the classic hitchhiker's thumb where the wearer simply fits the glove donned hand and ba- hand and bam and will and a ride will and a ride will arrive. Man, I am having a hard time reading today. It's okay. It's like six o'clock on a Monday night. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what my deal is. And jet lag, anyway, man. Anyway, I love you have, I you... love the hitchhiker goof. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> I would actually use it if it was a thing, because it's simpler than typing anything in the app. Just pull out your thumb and stick it out there, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um. I know the reason I didn't put this in the intro is because we've done wearables for the last couple of weeks, and uh, I felt like it was getting stale. So, and and I got that email from that wonderful listener who was like, "I love the unprofessional thing you did that one time. Keep doing that." <laughs> <laughs> I think That's it was. Great. I think it was the Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo Switch intro <laughs> that really oh, got him. Yeah. Oh, like man. keep doing that. All right. Good so I, switch. yeah, I mean, we got to add a little bit of touch professionalism, but uh, you know, at the same time, we can have fun with it, right? Keep it fast and loose. No, uh, this one, I, I don't know if I would use because you got to wear it all the time, and then uh, like to put it on and thumbs up might take longer than actually typing. But good joke, good joke, funny joke. I like that we're breaking these down like they're actual things. All right, what's up next? Some of them seem like they'd be fun actual things, like this one. So Duolingo's emoji course. So Duolingo, the app that will teach you the basics of everything from Arabic to Vietnamese in a few minutes a day, now offers up a course on how to speak emoji. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this one. This is because some of these, it's a little bit like you, you might think like, OK, the company's lost its mind, but this could be a product if they just like hitched it right. But this one just seems hilarious. Shrug emoji. I like so this I actually feel like I need. I feel like I'm so out of touch with the emoji cuz I get I'll I'll have text conversations with people and they will send me emojis and I'm like what does that mean? What like what are you trying to say with emojis? And uh it's another it's a whole other language. And uh for better or for worse. I don't know. Dude, you know what's really funny about that? And I don't know if this is the case for you or not, but I felt the same way and it's I think it had to do for me with Android, or at least the Android swipe that I was using, it didn't do something that iPhone tech specifically does. And that's when you type words, it adds an emoji to it as an option to replace a word. Oh. So people have gotten used to like just using emojis to you to mean specific words. Right. So that might be where this makes sense. But okay. that's that's definitely something uh discrepancy I saw between like an Android typing scheme and what Apple does. So that could that, be why. That is definitely helping me understand where I fell off the boat because it felt like overnight everybody was using this this language that I was like, wait, guys, I know internet speak like help me out here. What's going on? And uh, yeah, it sucks to fall behind. Now, is this is this like what our parents went through when we started developing uh, vernacular that was not, uh, you know, something they were familiar with? Like I, it's it's got to be. Except for now, my mom does it to me, and that's when I started to experience what you were talking about and being like, "What right? is she trying to tell me with emojis?" Oh my gosh, your mom knows emoji language. Oh, yeah, so much better than I do. We have to sign up for this Duolingo emoji course. I wish it were real. All right, what's up next? <laughs> All right, so I fix its itty bitty toolkit. The devices we love keep getting smaller and smaller, and yet the tools we use to fix them remain the same size. What you expect me to fix that new ultra thin iPad with a normal size screwdriver that makes me feel like a giant? I fits its <laughs> I fits its I fix its micro toolkit is the fix. If I sits, I fits. I, fits I sits. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, Dick. I again, this ain't a bad idea. I mean, you're not really supposed to go poking around in iPads, I don't think. But I wouldn't mind like a micro toolkit for messing around with some of my hardware. <laughs> nah, man. Did you did you see this one? This one's like super micro, like not even human human. Yeah, usable. you would need like one of those giant magnifying glasses to be working with it, and I'd probably break it with my hands. But oh, yeah. anyway, it, it was a funny idea. Let's get on to the other uh, pet themed one. This one's great, and uh, we have a special guest here on the show that can help speak to this one. I think, hopefully. Let's see. Let's see if it's worn off or not. So Amazon's Pet Lexa, your dog barks. What does he want? Food to go outside, to go outside and eat food? Ah, uh, who the hell knows? Dog barks at just about everything. But maybe, just maybe, Pet Lexa can help. Yeah. So, 
Hang on, let me let me ask her if if she can shed some light on this. Alexa, what is pet Lexa? Uh, Alexa, what is pet Lexa? Pet Lexa is a new feature that allows you to. Just kidding. It was just an April Fool's prank, joking that I can understand animals. I wish it were real. Maybe someday. She's got some attitude on her. Seriously, she's a sassy one. Take hey, it home. Hang on, though. Before we move on to the next one, I do have an... Like, I actually watched the video on this one, and this one made me crack up laughing Um, because listeners of the show probably know I'm a cat guy. I don't know. Are you a cat guy or a dog guy, Blake? I am a dog guy. You're a dog sure. guy. Oh, do you have a dog? I do not. Or I haven't had one in a long time. Okay. Well, I have two cats, and so I was watching the Pet Lexa, and uh, this one, this one got to me. Hang on. Let me see if I can cue it up here. About eight thousand four hundred steps. Okay, ordering jumbo sushi platter from Amazon restaurants. Okay, playing your cat or day playlist. <laughs> That's pretty perfect. Oh man, I wish I wish she could do that. Uh, yeah, it'd make life a whole lot easier. Although these girls are are pretty good. All right, what's up next? All right, so Netflix Live. <laughs> most most cord cutters have just one complaint. Watching live events can be tough. Well, with this in mind, Netflix launched Netflix Live, a pilot program that features Will Arnett watching various live streams and talking about, well, stuff. It's just basically him watching and talking about whatever he's looking at in full stream of conscious mode. And, well, it's pretty damn funny, actually. Uh, I... I wonder if this is the like the future of watching content or future of streaming stuff kind of on YouTube, like letting people watch you as you watch other stuff. I don't know. So it's funny. Okay, so I actually, uh, w- uh, okay, so this watching people watch people stuff, it's real because uh, there is this whole phenomenon behind, tra- oh, God, I'm going to mention Star Wars again. There's this phenomenon behind watching people's reactions to trailers, right? And it all started kind of with the oh, yeah. Force Awakens trailer way back uh, in 2015, where everyone was like, oh my gosh, it's the first time it's coming out in years. And um, so a couple months ago, or I guess it would have been, uh, yeah, it was a couple months ago, let's just say that, um, Star Wars released their final uh, Rogue One trailer. And um, they were asking for fans to post their reactions with a specific hag- hashtag and uh, they actually used my picture on the, on the Star Wars show <laughs> and my reaction to the thing because I had the, I had made the stupidest face and you guys can go check it out. It's a Rogue Reactions uh, Star Wars show. You probably find something there. But my face is like the picture is the the intro. Like we show your Star Wars reactions. But yeah, no, this phenomenon of watching other people watch stuff. Um, it, there's a lot of YouTube streamers and. Uh, Twitch streamers that will do exactly this. They will just sit and watch something and, you know, interact with it. And it's, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, some people are just more entertaining to watch than others, but there, there definitely is some weird psychological phenomenon that's going on there. If you just being like, you're watching somebody you like watch other stuff. It's weird. Maybe, maybe you like are living vicariously through them. I don't know. All right, let's let's move on to my favorite and the last one here. This one's my absolute favorite. This one kind of scares me. So Elon Musk's chemtrail announcement for decades, conspiracy th- theorists have suggested that chemtrails, their name for contrails, the trails left by planes flying at high altitudes, are actually biological agents. Tesla slash SpaceX CEO Elon Musk took the opportunity to suggest that something a bit more alien is going on. So, Nick, you want to illuminate this for everybody? Oh, man. So are you familiar with the whole chemtrail contrail thing? Uh, actually, I am very familiar with it for other reasons, but yes. <laughs> Wait, what other reasons are you are you familiar with it for? 
So I, I don't know if any of our listeners are fans of either of these people, but I'm a big Joe Rogan fan, and by way of him, I'm a big Eddie Bravo fan. And so you listen to these conspiracy theory crazy stuff about chemtrails, and actually, if you follow either one on, them inst- on Instagram, they come out about from the CIA that there is something similar to this that has been going on for years, but that's a whole other podcast worth of stuff. So yeah, very familiar with it. But anyway, hold, hold on. What like th- there is something that's going on with like, hang on. You, you can't just leave it there, Blake. Oh, of course I can. No, no but yeah, they're <laughs> so every X amount of years, you know how things get rolled out and the CIA will release documents for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, of, sure. Like different operations that have gone on. Well, a pilot test was something that was trying to do what was like a drum map of what what they would do or how it would work. Never really executed, but the idea of it was laid out um, through an old document or through – I can't remember the name of the operation anymore. Uh, but yeah, so I, I've heard about it before. I've gone down too many YouTube rabbit holes for it anyway. Yeah. That, Elon Musk's version of it is much better. That's uh, that's where I first actually heard a, uh, I was I was dating a girl um, probably like 10 years ago, and, and she – mentioned uh chemtrails and contrails and i of course didn't know and um she explained it to me that this was like some government conspiracy that they're trying to poison and crowd control the the uh the nation through you know dropping chemicals uh from planes but um but yeah so elon musk announced that you know he uh this whole uh chemtrail thing right so he he basically says that chemtrails are actually a message from time traveling aliens describing the secret of teleportation you know he might be right yep (laughs) that's an awesome one he's such a smooth dude oh man uh well blake uh this this was uh i'm i'm kind of blown away by the lack of interesting news this week maybe maybe our listeners can help us out next week and uh, send us some stuff. Yeah, Talk. man, shoot us some tweets, or if you come across anything, throw it on our Facebook or throw it at Twitter or email us, or you can even leave us a voicemail because we haven't gotten one of those yet. Oh, man, it's almost like you are saying the outro. That's it for today, everyone. If you have any suggestions for games, topics, news stories, or anything else you want us to cover, you can follow us on social media. You head on over to our Human Factors Cast Facebook page at facebook.com slash you guessed it human factors cast comment on our soundcloud reach us at h factors podcast on twitter or send us an email at human factors cast at gmail.com leave us a voicemail 901-646-1432 what's 901-646-1hfc you can also support us on our patreon uh you know and help keep this thing afloat like i said we actively turn down advertisements to bring you ad free listening and you can do that at patreon.com slash humanfactorscast. Be sure to like, subscribe, review us on iTunes, Google Play Store, whatever your favorite podcast directory is. Those always help us out. I want to thank my co-host for being on the show today. Blake Arnsdorf, where can our listeners find you? Oh, as always, you guys can find me on Twitter at Don't Panic UX, and I hope you have a wonderful Monday evening. As for me, I've been your host, Nick Rome. You can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter at Nick underscore Rome. Blake, we need a title. That's it. Oh, we do. Blake, we need a title. That's the title. Thanks again for tuning in to Human Factors Cast. Until next time, it depends. It depends. It depends.